check. Check my audio real quick. Okay, what's up, everybody? So I'm gonna show you, so I'm gonna show you how to set up a basic DSP module similar to the juice modules. My audio was messed up on the last stream, so I wanted to do it again. <clears throat> okay. So let's just start. Um, the goal is to make a DSP module. So like a, a header and CPP file, we're gonna make a distortion. And we want it to be set up kind of like the same way that the juice built-in DSP modules are. So let's use one of those first. And uh, I'll show you how to do that real quick. So one of the easier ones is the gain module, which is just a volume DSP module. So you can instantiate a DSP module, go into the DSP namespace, it's called gain. It's gonna ask you for a template uh, type name and you can type in float or double whatever you want here. I just always use float. And that's gonna set up what each method in the DSP module is gonna use as a type. <clears throat> okay, so let's call it something. I'm gonna call it game module. And a couple things you have to do with every DSP module is you have to prepare it and I already have the process spec set up right here. So you need to pass it a process spec. So that's gonna give it the maximum block size, the sample rate and the number of channels, which is really handy. So all we need to do is say gain module dot prepare. And we, you can see it takes in a reference to the process spec. So we can just pass it spec, which is what we have right here. So the game module also has a couple of methods that are pretty handy to call. So if you just type dot, you can kind of see what all of the methods that are available are, or you can go to the documentation either way. The set ramp duration seconds is really handy. That sets the smoothness of the uh, changes of the value so that, or let me say it like this, if you didn't have any kind of ramp, you would get a bunch of pops and clicks whenever you change the gain. Uh, whenever you move the dial like back and forth really fast because you're kind of changing from one state to the other really fast And what this does is it allows uh, a ramp over time from one change to the next and You know, you can type whatever you want here. I always use like 20 milliseconds. So 0 0.02 and that seems to work pretty good Now I already have a slider and a parameter set up. So don't have to worry about that um, so I just have a parameter listener. I have a slider or a dial in the GUI and I'm already attaching that in the GUI so we can just use this parameter. So let's go into here and I always like to set up the parameter in prepare to play so that it initializes. So let's say game module dot set. There's a couple of options. I like using gain decibels because usually the parameter is going to be in decibels, right? So zero to 20 would be decibels. 
So set gain decibels, and we just pass it that parameter, and we can do it by going to the tree state. Oh, that's trunk. Tree state. Get raw parameter value. We give it the ID, and then we say load because it's an atomic. So cool, that's calling set gain decibels. So that's all handled. That's pretty much it for gain. That's all you have to worry about. If you were using something like the chorus module, there'd be a bunch more set methods because you'd have like rate, depth, uh, delay, stuff like that. So for gain, that's all we have to worry about. And then let's go into parameter changed and make sure that we update the gain. So we'll go into parameter changed and make sure that we update the gain whenever we change our parameter. So parameter change gets called anytime the parameter changes. So we'll just say gain dot set gain decibels and we'll do the same thing. Input load. Cool. So now the game module should have its gain. Um, so now the game module should have its set gain decibels method updated. <clears throat> and then uh, we just kind of have to process it. So I already have an audio block. So we can say game module dot process. And this is going to take in what's called a process context. So this is a template type name in the juice DSP um, module. And what this is asking for is actually a juice DSP um, process context replacing. So this is replacing what's in the buffer or the audio block, give it a type and always just use float. And then we pass it the block that we want to uh, replace with the audio data. So we've got game module dot process that should that should work. We're using the audio block. And let's see, we're preparing it. We are changing the parameter in parameter change. And I guess one more thing we could do if we really wanted to and release resources, we could say game module dot reset. So, you know, there's that. And I think we can build. So let me, um, right now I have it on AU. Let me set it up to where I can run it with logic attached. So we can go into product scheme, edit scheme. And right here for executable, we can choose logic or whatever you want. Logic. So that way, now when I hit play, it will open logic for me. Oh, there might be an error. Okay. So now it's going to open logic for me and it's going to run in the, uh, it's going to run in debug mode while attached to logic. So that's pretty handy. So if there's any kind of assertions that we hit or any kind of crash or anything, Xcode will take us to the line that causes it. Cool. All right. Let's check it out. Uh, it's actually called header demo. So here's the UI. This is our little dial. All right. And let's see if it's working. Uh, let me turn this on right here. So it's not too loud. Yep. It's working. It's attached. The gain module is processing and it's getting louder. Okay, so all of that just to kind of show you what the basic Juice DSP module is like to interact with. So let's create our own DSP module that kind of uses the same format. So let's uh, let's get rid of everything.
I will get rid of parameter changed also. And this should be it, right? Yeah, okay, cool. So, I think I already have a DSP folder. Yep, I got a DSP folder right here in the producer. So let's create a CPP and header file. So let's do distortion. Let's do a soft clipper. Okay, so we're gonna say new header file and I'll just call it distortion or I'll call it soft clipper. Okay. And then we're gonna do a CPP. Okay, so save and open an IDE, should be good. Okay, cool. So here's our empty files. And you see the CPP is already including the soft clipper header. And yeah, cool. All right, so let's just get started. We know we need a couple of things that are the same as that gain module, right? We need a repair method, we need a process method, um, we can put a reset method in there and then we can have like a set drive or set gain, whichever one we want. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is include the juice header so that we have access to all of the uh, the built-in juice functions and stuff like that. And let's go ahead and just create a class. So I'll just start typing class and I'll say, uh, this was soft clipper, I called it, right? So soft clipper. We'll give it a public area and we'll give it a private area. Cool. So let's give it a constructor, a uh, default constructor, because why not? Okay. Uh, we're gonna need a prepare method, right? And just like the gain module, we're gonna want to be able to, uh, we're gonna be able to want to pass it the process spec. So we can say juice DSP, uh, uh, let's see, juice DSP process spec. Is it gonna auto complete for me? Yep. And let's do a reference to it. That way, whenever we pass the spec to it, it'll actually pass the spec itself and not just a copy of it to the function so that we're actually affecting or using that spec. Cool. And then we're gonna need a process method and we're gonna start with a block method. So we're gonna process a block. And similar to the prepare method, we are going to pass it uh, a reference to an audio block. So juice DSP, and I think we just say audio block. There we go, block type name, we'll give it float. We'll say it's a reference uh, and let's call it block. Cool, so the process block, I'm actually going to implement here in the header and not the CPP. Uh, because the header gets passed to the translation unit, so the header has a better chance of getting uh, better optimization. So I always implement my DSP in the header because that's what the juice modules do. So, you know, juice knows what they're doing, so I'm going to do that too. So we're going to implement it here. And for now, I'm just going to go into my snippets and I'm just going to create a block loop. Yep. So what we're doing is we're gonna loop through each channel and then we're gonna loop through each sample in that channel and we're gonna replace whatever is in the block with something else. By default, I just have it, you know, passing itself through, um, you know, no processing at all, uh, just to make sure, just to kind of have it there as a default. And yeah, so is that good enough for right now? Let's create a couple of variables so we'll say float um, m sample rate and then we're going to have a we need a drive variable right because we're going to want to have a drive slider and instead of a float let's do a smooth value 
see if it'll auto complete for me. Yeah, smooth value. So what this is going to do is the same exact thing as that set ramp duration in seconds. What that was doing in game was actually um, affecting a smooth value in the game module. So this will allow us to give it the sample rate and give it a ramp duration in seconds so that it's always smooth. So we're gonna call that, um, I guess I'm just gonna call it drive that. Okay, I think that's all we need for now. Let's do a set method. So let's say void set drive. And do we need to take in anything to it? Yeah, so we're gonna take in a float. New drive. Okay, cool. So let's go to the CPP and implement this stuff. So let's start with the constructor. Okay, so all we need to do is say soft clipper, colon, colon, and then soft clipper again. Give it the parentheses and then we'll give it a body right here. Cool. Similarly, we'll do the same thing for the prepare method. So we'll say prepare process spec. We don't need to do it for the block because we implemented it in the header. Void soft clipper. Uh, so we're gonna do set drive. And is that it? Let's see. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So what do we need to do in the constructor? Um, pretty much all we have to do is initialize our variables. So sample rate is first. So give it a colon and we'll say M sample rate. And I'll just give it 44 one to start. And then M drive is going to be, let's see here, drive is gonna be zero to 20. That was on the processor side, right? But we're gonna actually, that's in decibel, so we're gonna need to convert to gain. So instead of zero, we wanna start at one. One would be no gain. Very cool, okay, our variables are initialized. Very cool. Uh, we need to set up our process spec. So I think all we really need to do is say M sample rate is equal to spec dot sample rate and that'll handle it so when we call prepare in the processor it will pull the sample rate from the process spec which should come from the host and it'll set our sample rate accordingly and it'll be correct and lastly we need to set the drive now remember we're using the smooth value so we don't actually get to say something like um what is it called? Drive is equal to new drive. That's not going to work. It's going to give us an error because the smooth value uses um, a getter and setter. And actually, let me just build it and show you that it doesn't work. Because Xcode isn't giving me a uh, error yet. Why did that work? Okay, I'm gonna have to cut that out. Okay, so interesting. Let me make sure I don't have any chat. Okay, okay. So for, let me go back, let me erase this. And then this is where I'm gonna edit right here. So, okay, so for set drive, what we're gonna do is say M raw drive, or what is it called, drive dot set target value. That's how we set the, oh, I know what it is. I skipped something. So one more thing we have to do in prepare since we have access to the sample rate. So we're gonna say M drive dot reset so that we can pass it the sample rate and then we can give it a ramp length in seconds Similar to the um, similar to the set ramp duration in the game module, so I'm going to give it the same value, 0 0.02. And now what this is going to do is, anytime you set 
a target value with drive. Anytime you set a target value with drive, it's going to set the target with this new ramp in mind. So it's going to ramp up to the new target with that. Give me a second. Whatever. Okay, so let's go into set drive and we are going to say M drive dot set target. And this is how we give the smooth value a new smooth value. And we want to give it new drive, but we want to convert it from decibels to gain. So juice has a class for that decibels and then decibels to gain, and then we'll pass it new drive. That way it's always converted and that should be good. Okay. So yeah. Let's see if it builds. Cool, it built, but there's one more thing we need to do and that's actually implementing the DSP. So this is gonna be a soft clipper, okay? So, so I'll use the soft clipper that Eric Tarr uses in his book, um, Hack Audio. So it's pretty simple. The equation is two divided by pi. So for now, I'm just gonna do 3.14 times the ATAN. Just want it to auto complete for me. Yep, ATAN of your input. And since we're using a block loop, we are gonna say data sample. And that's gonna be multiplied by our drive. And we need to say get next value. And that's how we actually get the value from the smooth value. So inside of a tan, we're saying our input times our drive so that it actually drives the input harder into the a tan. And then it has this little two divided by pi um, scalar. Okay, so let's just build that and see what it sounds like. Well, it's not gonna sound like anything. So let's just build that, make sure we're all good. Perfect, okay. But it's not gonna do anything yet because we didn't actually, you know, call this class or make an object. So I'm gonna go into the processor and we need to include the header file of our soft clipper. So include, um, we're gonna have to go up a folder, I think. Uh, is that DSP? Yep, DSP. And then we're gonna say soft clipper. That should be good. Now I should be able to make an instance of it. So let's see if it auto completes. Yep, soft clipper, and I'm gonna say soft clipper module. And it's got a default constructor, so we don't have to worry about that. We have to prepare it so that it gets the sample rate. And if we didn't get the sample rate, the smooth value wouldn't work. So we're gonna say soft clipper. Oh, that's not right. Soft clipper module dot prepare we'll pass it spec and then the other thing we're going to do is something i like to do is initialize the set the setter methods in prepare to play so that it initializes so i'm going to say soft clipper module dot set drive and we're going to give it the input uh, that's in the tree state uh get raw parameter value that was called input and like i said it's an atomic so we'll say load and we can go ahead and just copy this exact line and put it in parameter changed, just like we did with the gain module, so that anytime this parameter changes, it updates the clipper module. Pretty simple. And lastly, right now we're using a process block method, so we're gonna actually pass it a whole block. We're not using a context yet, we'll do that in a second. So what we'll say, is soft clipper module dot process block and we'll just give it audio block and see what happens 
And I think that should work. Let's check it out. <clears throat> cool. Let's see what happens. You're gonna open it with logic. <clears throat> gonna open it with logic. Check my chat real quick in case anybody. Hey, what's up? How's it going? All right. All right, let's turn off the beat. Let's pull up our plugin and let's see what happens. It's at zero. Did I pull up the wrong one? Let's see. Yeah, I think I just pulled up the wrong plugin. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, we're getting some soft clipping. You hear that? Nice and overdriven. Let's check it out on the oscilloscope. So I have this other channel set up. Let's see, I'm gonna use this test tone, but let me mute it so that it's not loud and annoying. So let's see, sine wave at zero dB. And let's put the plug in right here, get this oscilloscope by Soko Labs. And you can already tell that the wave is already distorted because if we turn the plug in off, we can see that the wave, that's more like a sine wave, but it's a little smoothed and kind of more curved. And as we pull the drive up, it's gonna get even closer to kind of a square shape. Yeah. So look at that. We've got a nice rounded off overdriven signal. That's pretty cool. All right. So I'm gonna close that without saving it. Beat back on. Okay, cool. So it was that simple. If you wanna leave it there, you can. If you wanna just use a audio block kind of like that, definitely can. We can also add a process sample so let's go here and that's going to return something so let's do process sample and that's going to take in float uh i guess new input we'll call it and we'll do it here so let's just do the same exact thing we're going to return this We're going to return that and what we can do is we can either use process block or we can use process sample. Oh, sorry, messed up. We want to use new input instead of data sample, right? Because we don't have access to data sample in this process sample method. So that's good. So we can use either or, but to kind of make things a little cleaner, we could just call process sample from this uh, process block. So we can say process sample, and then we can say data sample, and that should work. So now we kind of have our DSP in one place that we can look at and append and edit whatever we want to do. But whether we use process block or process sample, the same DSP is going to happen. And this is what I do. Uh, for like my filters and my distortion and stuff and it works out pretty good. So yeah uh, Let's just call process sample and make sure it still works and to do that we're gonna actually have to Instead of doing this we're gonna have to create a process um, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to create a block loop That was pretty slow and then we're gonna say data sample is equal to gain module dot process sample and then we're going to say data sample and it's going to tell us that uh we're using the wrong block that that and that let's see if that gets rid of our issue cool okay so we've got our audio block we're making a loop through channels and samples based on that block 
and we're calling game module dot process sample to update what's in the, the audio block as opposed to calling process with the block. So this should internally call process sample. So let's just make sure that works. Just gonna build it real quick and then just open logic. All right, let's open logic. Turn the beat off. Let's open up the plugin and let's see if it still works. Very cool. Let's see, did something wrong. Audio block, you know, audio block channel. Process sample. Return. Sample sample for data sample is equal. Oh, I called gain module instead of soft clipper. We don't want gain module, we want soft clipper. So soft clipper dot process sample and we give it data sample. Build that real quick. Turn the beat off. Okay, so this is using process sample. Same result, let me turn it down a bit. Still distorted. Cool, okay, so it's still distorted, that still works. And that's pretty much it. You could leave it there if you want. Now you have a process sample and a process block. Um, but we could take this one step further and make it even more like the juice modules and we can use a template. So um, if you notice, if we go into juice modules and we go into DSP, let's take the gain for example. Let's see, they have all these type name or they have all these template type name sample types, uh, sample type, and then pretty much all of the functions that return something or take in a value, take in something called sample type. And that's just a generic um, user made type name. And if you also look at process, it looks a little different. We have an in block and an out block. Uh, we still get num samples and num channels. And we still have a loop right here. We're still looping through the samples. We have a loop through the channels right here. So we can set it up to be uh, like this. Or should I say like that? So we can set it up to follow this kind of, you know, we can set it up to follow this kind of setup and we don't have to use uh, the same level of complexity. So let's just take this stuff right here. Let me go in here. We're gonna get rid of this. And I'm gonna call this block. I'm gonna call this just process. And like the gain module, it's going to take in a type name called process context. We just put that on top of it. 
let me get all of this stuff right here. Like that. Okay. And then we can kind of go about it the same way. We're going to loop through the sand. Uh, we're going to loop through the channels. And before I forget, let's also grab the argument, the input argument. So a const reference to the context. And if you remember when we set up the gain module, we pass in a uh, process context replacing. And that's what this context is. So let's make sure that lines up and it, yep, goes away. Okay, cool. Okay, so we can set up a loop kind of the same way we set up the loop in the block. So we're going to say four. So let's say size T. Let's call it channel. And then we have num channels right here. So channel list and num channels. And then we're going to say plus plus channel. Okay. So we need to create a variable that gives us access to the data and we can use the in block for that. So I'm going to say auto input is equal to in block. And that should give me access to the channel pointer. Channel pointer. It's not going to auto complete for me. And we should be able to pass in channel. And then we can do the same thing for the output. So this is going to be auto output. And we're going to grab the out block. Okay. That should work. And then we need to loop through the samples kind of the same way. So let me just grab this right here. I'm going to take that. But we need to make sure that we change this to sample. Sample. And then we already have a, um, a variable for the num samples, and that's called len for length. So let's do that. And there we go. Now we're looping through the channels and the samples. Okay, so now we're basically going to just do the same thing as the block but we're going to do it with this input and output um, variable. So instead of saying data sample, um, to write to the context, we're going to say output, and that's going to be sample, is equal to let's process sample. And that's going to be input uh, sample. Right? That looks good, I think. Let me hit build real quick. Okay, build succeeded. So let's go into the processor, into the process block. And instead of process sample, now we can erase this and we can call the same process method the way we did it with the included juice gain module. So we could say soft clipper dot uh, process. And we're gonna give it that process context replacing. So juice DSP process context replacing float. And we'll give it the audio block. And that should be it. We should be good. So now we made our own DSP class, our own DSP module, and we're calling it the same exact way we're doing it with the juice modules, like the gain module, compressor module, whatever, you know. Cool, so that built. So let's pull that up, turn the beat off. 
All right. Hopefully this works. There we go. Now we've got our clipping. All right. Very cool. All right. Cool. Just like that, we built our own DSP module set up like the juice one. Okay, but we can do a couple of things to make it even better. So if you noticed in the processor header, when we called the game module, we had the option to pass this type name to it. And we don't have that with ours. So let's set that up. So basically, uh, wait, I was gonna pull it. Um, so we need to give the entire class a template type name. And the way we could do that is using the same style as the juice module. We're gonna put template type name at the top of the header file. And that way the processor is gonna ask us to pass a type name to the class. And the class will use that type name for all of its stuff. Okay, so we're gonna have to take this right here, sample type. We're gonna have to pass that in all the places that uses some kind of type, you know, like float, double, whatever. And in our case, we're gonna need to go to process sample, and instead of float, we'll say sample type, and we'll say sample type there. And I think that's all we have to do for the header. Uh, we're going to go into the CPP and do something similar. So we're going to take that, go into the CPP. Okay, we're going to put it above the constructor. And because of that, we're going to also have to go here and say sample type. And this is going to allow us to pass in a float or double into the module whenever we create it in the header file. So just like that. We take template type name, put it above these two as well. And then we're gonna have to take this right here, the class name with the sample type and replace the other ones with it. Cool, that should work. Uh, I'll give sample type to drive right here. And then the last thing we're gonna have to do is tell it what template types we can pass to it. Oh, I must have forgot to put sample type in the header. Let's go here and we'll go set drive. Yep, sample type right there. Very good. Okay, let's make sure that error goes away. Yep, cool. So at the bottom of the CPP, we can put in the two uh, basic, uh, we can put in basically the two sample types that we wanna be able to pass to it. So in our case, we're gonna say template and it's gonna be class, and it's gonna be our class name, saw clipper, and then whatever you want to pass to it. So let's give it float, give it a semicolon, and then we're gonna do the same thing with double. Double, all right. And that should be good. So now if I build, we should get an error saying that we're not passing in float or double in the header right here. So let's hit build. Cool, so it's telling us that the use of class template soft clipper requires template arguments. So let's give it float. Right there. I think that's the only place we use the class name. So I think that should be the only place we need Let's see if it builds. Awesome, let's open logic. Turn the beat off, our plugin loaded up. And we've got distortion. So our module still works, all right, cool. We did it. So now, our call to our processor, our call to our module looks exactly like the juice DSP module. The class itself is set up 
It's a little more simple, but it's set up the same way. We're passing it template type name. Um, we are putting all the DSP in the header file so that it gets uh, optimized a little bit better. And there's one more cool thing we can do. We can make this much better. See this right here? This value, two divided by 3.14, we know what value that is. There's no need to calculate it at every sample. That's just a whole lot of CPU for nothing. So we can actually, let's just create a const expression so that we're not calculating that all the time because this isn't changing, right? This isn't coming from one of our variables and it's not involving the input, something that changes. We know what two divided by 3.14 is. So let's do static cons express float. I always call this pi divisor. And then we'll just say equals two divided by, and then we'll actually get the actual, uh, a better estimate of pi than 3.14. So we'll go juice, I think math, math constants. Yeah, math constants and we'll say float. And then this will just be pi like that. And then we can take pi divisor. We can put it there. And that should save us quite a bit of CPU. Cause first of all, division in DSP is always gonna be slow. Um, oh, I guess not always, but you know, it, it's better to assume that division is gonna be slow because we're not always positive what the compiler is going to do for us. So um, it's best to avoid it if you can, or to put it into a place where it's not like sample by sample. So I think this is pretty good. We've got our const express and yeah. So just make sure that it still builds. And we are good to go, I think. Cool, okay, there we go. Our juice module, our DSP module is made and it's pretty much set up exactly like the juice one. Um, I think there's one thing we can change. Um, I think, let's see, if we go into gain, we'll see that if we go to reset, let's see, where's reset at right here. So what I'm doing in mind is I'm saying sample rate is equal to spec dot sample rate and prepare. But then I'm also calling this initialization of the smooth value, which is reset. And juice does it in a reset function and then it, it just calls reset and prepare. I, I don't know if it makes a difference, but we can do that. So let's go here. I'm gonna put reset after prepare. So let's go implement it. Uh, let's take this right here. And this is gonna be a reset. Okay, so just like juice. So we're gonna call reset on the smooth value, but only if our sample rate is actually initialized. So go here. So I'll just say if uh, M sample rate is greater than zero, I'm gonna take this put it there and then we're going to call reset after sample rate is set and I think that's pretty much it let's make sure that still works that was the only difference between our module and the juice one so let's make sure that builds and make sure it still sounds correct okay let's open up logic cool it opened turn off beat Okay, awesome. Our distortion is still there. So let's move the dial back and forth uh, really quickly and make sure that we're not getting any pops or clicks. Yeah, I think we're good. Our smooth value is doing its job. And there we go, that's it. Okay, so that's how you set up a juice module or, oh, that's not what you're saying. Okay, so that's how you set up a module, a DSP module for yourself, set up just like juice. 
you can take the same concept and you can expand upon it, make it larger. You can add more DSP, you can add more setters, you can add some getters if you want to get some of the parameters that are in there. Um, yeah. If you go look at the other more complicated modules, like maybe the ladder filter, the chorus, you can kind of take some inspiration from those too, but you know, it's pretty much going to be a lot of the same thing. There's a lot of macros and complicated looking stuff in here. Um, oh, this is what I wanted to uh, also talk about for a second. So you see in game, what is game doing? It's just multiplying the signal by a number, right? So if we look in the DSP right here, uh, we can see multiply. So if we see the word multiply, we know that, you know, multiplication is happening somewhere. So instead of just saying input or um, instead of saying like data times gain, this is saying float vector operations, use the multiply one and then multiply the out block by the in block. And the reason that they use float vector operations, as I understand it, is the float vector operations has SIMD optimization wherever it can. So if you can get away with using the float vector operations in your DSP, you're gonna have um, by default some SIMD um, optimization. So that code will run four to eight times faster, potentially. So if you can get away with using anything inside float vector operations, you can. It's kind of difficult whenever you have a complex uh, algorithm or complex D DSP. It's not always it's not always going to be um, you know likely that you can use it. Um, but if you can, great. That'll give you a bunch of optimization. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you set up a that's how you set up a juice module. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I need to talk about? Uh, let me go through here real quick. Oh, let's go ahead and add these no accepts to, let's see, is it for... Okay, it's for all three of them. Okay. All right. So let's go add that. So on prepare. And on process. Oh, wait. Did I? Oh, yeah. You're supposed to put it in the CPP. Oh, well, no, it's good for process, but you do this, I think. So let's put it on prepare and reset. Oh, what? both of them okay so let me go back so I messed that up So one more thing that we want to add is you see in process, in reset and prepare, we have these no accepts. Let's just take those and put that in our module as well. So in the header, we put it on each definition. And then we need to also go into the CPP and put it on the implementations. And remember, we implemented process in the header, so we're only going to have to put it in the header. Uh, for process, but we need to put on prepare and reset for the CPP. So let's just build that real quick, make sure it works, make sure it builds. Okay, cool. And there we go. That's how you set up a DSP module 
uh, very similar to the Juice DSP module, so that's very useful. Feel free to use this approach, um, add some stuff to it, add some more DSP, some more methods, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks. All right, I think I'm gonna end the stream there because it looks like nobody's watching anyway. And yeah, all right, cool. So uh, let's see, today's Thursday. I will be back Tuesday. I will think of something to do. And uh, yeah, see you. <laughs>